is talking about anatomy and physiology and the concept of the basic cellular theory. So in the basic cellular theory, this is the theory that all living things are composed of cells. All cells come from pre-existing cells. They do this through mitosis and meiosis. They carry out basic processes. So some cells are used for food and metabolism to make our food into energy. And then other cells are responding to the environment and other cells are growing and reproducing and disposing of waste. There are two main types of cells. You have prokaryote cells and eukaryote cells. So in a prokaryote cell, it sort of looks like, like this. Um, it has what are called pili, which are like little attachments. They're like little fingers that come off of it. Um, it also has these long little tails at the end, and those are the flagella. It has a plasma membrane. It also has a capsule with a sticky coating and a cell wall that provides rigidity. So in the middle you have a nucleoid which has single cell bacterial chromosomes and then you have ribosomes all in there as well. So you won't need to know what is in each cell by heart but you will need to know what things within the cell does. So we'll get to that. So a eukaryote cell, so we just went over a prokaryote, those are the ones they're they look like this, they have little fingerlings around it, and they have the flagella tail at the end. Uh, then you have a eukaryote cell. That's going to be a circular cell that has a plasma membrane. And within the cell, there are multiple different things. It's not as simple as the prokaryote cells. So you have libosomes, a nucleus, centrioles, microtubules, ribosomes, cytoplasm. There's a Golgi apparatus, and all of these things do different things within the eukaryote cell. It has a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and a rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we'll go over all of this stuff, don't worry. So what are the differences between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes? We just kind of went over a little bit of that. So prokaryotes, they're simpler. They're single-celled. They're usually bacteria or algae. They're very small. They have no nucleus or organelles. And they have single, usually circular chromosomes, and they reproduce by budding or fission. So they just kind of separate. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, can be singular celled or multicellular. They're plants cells, animal cells, fungi. They're large cells. They're 10 times larger than a prokaryote cell. They have a nucleus and they have organelles. And they have multiple chromosomes. They separate by mitosis or meiosis. So if we kind of break that all down super simply, the prokaryotes, they are single cell. They're really simple. They're small. They're bacteria. They're fungi. The eukaryote cells, that's where you're getting into the plant animal cells. They have multiple different things inside of it that do multiple different things, which we'll go over. And they use mitosis and meiosis to reproduce. Okay, so what are the functions of these organelles? So you have a chloroplast. This is the site of photosynthesis. And this is in eukaryote plant cells. So, in, so if we think like plants, we think of chlorophyll. So plants have chlorophyll, so like a chloroplast. And this is what it uses for photosynthesis, OK? All eukaryotes have a nucleus. This regulates all cell activity, including replication of DNA, which codes for enzymes that carry out all important cell jobs. So we always think of the nucleus as like the brain of the cell, I guess, right? So that's, the nucleus houses the DNA. And so this nucleus has the DNA inside of it and our DNA codes for certain enzymes that carry out all important jobs within the cell. So that's why the nucleus is known as like the brain of the cell. Then we have ribosomes. Ribosomes are in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, and ribosomes use RNA to transcribe DNA into protein. So ribosomes use RNA to transcribe DNA into proteins. So think of ribosome, starts with an R. So ribosomes use RNA to transcribe the DNA into proteins, okay? Then we have the mitochondria. This is the powerhouse of the cell. This uses oxygen to burn glucose and produces ATP for cell energy. So our mitochondria is where our energy is created. A mitochondria is in all eukaryote cells. So plant and animal cells, this is like the little place that's creating the energy, mitochondria. 
The cytoplasm is a watery um, like substance that's inside the cell. The cytoplasm is like this medium that holds all the little organelles in the cell into place. Cytoskeleton is what provides structure for the cell, and a cytoskeleton is only in a eukaryote cell. A cytoplasm is in both a prokaryote and a eukaryote. So in endoplasmic reticulum, there's two types. We have a smooth and a rough. The rough, again, think the R has ribosomes in it, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes produces proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is used in the synthesis of fat. So again, R in the rough endoplasmic reticulum has the ribosomes, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum with the S synthesizes fats. There may be a test question on that on the exam. So the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, and what this means is there's like a little circle with a tail one way and then a little circle with a tail the other way. So it's a bilayer. So there's two phospholipids. Those are the phospholipids and they surround the cell. And this is a highly selective barrier for passive and active transport. So this phospholipid bilayer works to allow things into the cell and out of the cell by different mechanisms of transport. There can be you know, certain little things where a protein fits like a lock and a key that opens up the bilayer to let that protein in. It can also be things like diffusion. Um, you know, you'll see that a lot when you get into nursing school with electrolyte imbalances and things like that and fluid overload and are we giving hypertonic solution or hypotonic solution, all of those things, again, come back to this phospholipid bilayer. And this is why it, this information is really important to know before you go into nursing school because it all carries through into the medicine that we learn. Okay, let's keep going. There's also a cell wall. This is a stiff outer layer of the cell, and this is in plants, fungi, and prokaryotes. So Golgi bodies are something else that are in eukaryotes. Uh, these package proteins and secrete them outside of the body. So you, these are like little guys that package in the proteins and then they go to there and they let it out. Vacuoles, these are like storage containers within the cell. So again, we can think of vacuole, it's kind of like a vacuum and the vacuum like stores things, like kind of like sucks them up and stores it. So you can think of it like that. And flagellum, remember we were talking about the prokaryotes have that long tail and that's the flagella. That is used for locomotion and this can be both in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay, so that's it for this video. The next video is going to be about cellular reproduction where we talk about mitosis versus meiosis. So that one will be linked right at the end. And if you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up down below. If you want that free 14 page ATI study guide, make sure to grab one down below. If you want the full ATI T's Science Study Guide, you can go ahead and click that link below as well and it will bring you over to where you can purchase. Okay, thanks guys.